Hey guys, welcome to Vogue United, welcome to another video. And guys, the court arbitrary of sport has declared that Manchester City are going to be playing Champions League football next season. The ban that UEFA set for Manchester City has been put under review. The court arbitrary for sport has declared that there was not enough evidence to ban Manchester City of their accusations that you know they were moving money around and they would only find 10 million euros for you know not not because they deemed that whatever they did was worth 10 million euros but because they were fined two things they were sued two things by UEFA one by hiding money of their books and the second was to not fully cooperate with CAS for that in for that information to supplant for the investigation. The second thing is the thing that's been fined, which is obviously if you interrupt an investigation, you are delaying the process and you're not being fully cooperative, so therefore you're getting fined 10 million euros. That's what's been going on. Uh, what am I saying this? Like, why am I being so specific about the situation? Because there are going to be some people that are, you know, going to be saying, well, they still get they still got a fine because they, you know, they were handing the books just that, you know, they got away with it and things like that. You know, blaming the Manchester City for these kind of things. And, you know, I am, I am not one to say, like, that I completely believe what's going on with Manchester City. Like, they probably got away with it. Like, they, they did probably some things, but, like, I'm not going to get into that. But the thing is that I know what this has been the topic. Of, you know the past couple months in world football well with the thing that happened with the quarantine it's been you know the, not the main topic of discussion but they were planning it to be the main topic of discussion because we need to remember that this came up pretty much before the Champions League just came about and started in the round of 16 and how influential would it be for players to know that hey we might not be in Manchester City next season because if we're gonna be two seasons without Champions League football, we're 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 going like that could have disrupted their you know their commitment with the club. Obviously, uh, now they can completely focus in ripping Real Madrid to 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 shred. and to all those people that were calling Barcelona fans or people about talking about VAR crybabies for what's been going on with Real Madrid. I hope that those same people that called us crybabies are not gonna be saying corruption and how could uh, Guardiola like let go let go about and do this? Well, first of all, let's talk about situation. The period that was being reviewed by UEFA was not the period of Pep Guardiola as the manager of Manchester City. It was the period of Mancini as the manager of Manchester City. Not saying that Mancini is at fault here, but it was the period when Mancini was manager. Therefore, Guardiola is just a consequence that he happens to be the manager at this moment in time. We know all these people, especially from Mundo Deportivo, because you know they they kind of are like the anti Cruyffist and the anti Guardiola and everything everything good about the Cruyffism. They are doing that so. Uh, they were doing all this campaign of every single time that Guardiola's teams lose oh Guardiola is a failure how could you fail it's an extreme failure even though he might have won the league maybe he maybe he lost very narrowly in the Champions League oh incredible failure like always something bad happens like let's let's look about it in the Spanish River in Mundo Deportivo it's always when Manchester City loses is Guardiola's Manchester City. When Manchester City wins, I don't know. Where is it? Where, where, where is the information that Manchester City even won something? Oh, Manchester City won this. Not, not Guardiola's Manchester City won this. And there's been this whole campaign because, you know, this and thereabouts. I don't have to explain, like, there is a reason I understand why the Real Madrid media, like, Marca, As. El Chiringuito, all these kind of things, you know, want to destroy the reputation of Guardiola because they know that 
Guardiola is a symbol of how things should be done and if we go by and we go and set our example in that and if we execute the things that we used to do like the way that we used to do uh, we're gonna end up winning trebles and winning Champions League again and having the best team in history that we used to and they don't want that obviously they, they want us to fail in the misery because they know that every time that we follow a certain style we saw it with Johan Cruyff the first Champions League in our history like one of our, our most successful periods, we see him with Reijar, another Champions League once more, with Guardiola, with Luis Enrique, every time that we follow the process, it's been success after success after success. Every time that we've deviated from the process, it's been like what we've seen. We saw it with Valverde, we saw it with Tad Martino, we saw it in those last couple of years of Reijar, we saw it, like, we saw it after Cruyff left, that Barcelona have a certain way of doing things. We are different club from everyone else. Not that we are better than everyone else, although by the last 20 or so years, I do think that we are with Bayern the best, the best clubs in the world. But that's not here or there. Like it's not about us being better than others. It's about us being different because we've done things differently. Just like Manchester United have been set an example by what Alex Ferguson did, or. The example that Juventus have been set by, you know, how, what what Conte left as his legacy, or what Bayern Munich have been doing of having Rummenigge and all these people running the club very successfully for the past three decades. There is an image, there is a foundation, and us, we have the Cruyffism as our foundation, as the example to do things. I know what I know why the Madrid media wants to disrupt that because obviously they want they want it to succeed, but why? Does our own media, Mundo Deportivo, especially Mundo Deportivo, want to disrupt that? Because, you know, it doesn't set with the board. There is a division in the Barcelona hierarchy between Cruyffist and not Cruyffist. Unfortunately, the not Cruyffist, you know, are going to always be against Guardiola, against Xavi, against even Messi. That's why there were those, that company. That's what the Barca Gate incident came about because everything that's good with Barca that comes from the Cruyffism, which happens to be all the good things that have come to Barcelona ever, well, let's disrupt that. Let's disrupt that because that we didn't do that and we cannot have them succeed. It's a very annoying thing of sorts. To a point also, let's talk about the, the reason that Manchester City is good that they're not banned because one, they're not going to lose all their stars. And I'm saying that just because I'm pretty sure Barcelona were not going to say Kevin De Bruyne, therefore let's have him stay with Pep Guardiola and keep enjoying his football in Manchester City. And the other reason is that it's good that Manchester are going to still be one of the best competitors because I want to see a really tough race with Liverpool for the next couple of years. Like, it's been said that Klopp is going to be staying until 2024. That might be rumors. He could always leave sooner. He could always, you know, set to stay if he likes what he's what's going on. But it's gonna be a really interesting race. Imagine the next couple of years: Liverpool, Manchester City, race against race, uh, Salah versus De Bruyne, Alisson Ederson, Van Dijk, Laporte. Like it's gonna be just a really nice race. And adding the project that Manchester, that Chelsea is doing, that Manchester United are doing. See how that's gonna. Uh, affect the title race. The Premier League is going to be a lot of fun to watch. You have the project of Leicester with Jamie Barty, with James Madison. You also have Everton with Carlo Ancelotti. You have Arsenal with Mikel Arteta. Jose Mourinho with Tottenham. You have Wol Os Wolvinos. You have like you have just very nice projects in the Premier League, and it's definitely the best in le league in the world. I enjoy watching it. Barcelona, I watch it because I'm a fan of Barcelona, not necessarily because I, at every particular moment, I enjoy watching Barcelona, but, you know, when I want to watch something really entertaining, I probably go ahead and watch the Premier League, and that's why it's really exciting, because I can watch a race. I really enjoyed Pep Guardiola against Mourinho, Real Madrid against Barcelona, even the, 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 the year that we didn't win the league. I still enjoyed it because I watched a great rivalry, I watched great football, it was just very nice to see. And it's very good to see that now we have Pep Guardiola against the club, Liverpool against Manchester City. It's just going to be a really nice thing to see, and overall that's what's been going on. Also, the 
one thing I wanted to mention, if you guys haven't heard, uh, Bartomeu did an interview with TV3 about, you know, ask, he was asked questions and one of the questions was, is he gets at the end going to stay in the, in, for the Champions League and he said definitely he's staying and he was asked also, will he be staying any further than that and he said well, he has to come on to 2021 and we expect him to, uh, we expect him to, to, to finish with it. And basically confirming that he that he gets in will be sent until 2021. You know, I was dodgy about it. I'm still dodgy about it. Like decisions could change. You, we 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 hear all the time that there is pressing the support managers, and the next day they boot them out. So it's it's what's going on. But at least it's good that the likes of Setien, we know we, we, he could be still in the 2020. I don't think there's any better options than the 2021 because what are you going to do for a year? If we really want Xavi, what do you think a new manager is going to do for a year? Like, what do you think is going to happen? Like, do you think bringing Pochettino for a year, Kuman, like, what are they really going to do for a year? How are they really going to prove Barcelona? Not much. So, I think it's better to see what he at the end does under 2021. Give him a year, give him a transfer window to do things to develop the team and I think that's gonna be the best thing for us going forward. I think that it's gonna be very positive for the team to you know have a year Christian and let's see what can happen to twenty twenty one. Maybe Christian does so well that Laporta or Victor Font come in and maybe they see okay he gets at the end he kinda of follows our idea. Let's save the Chavi idea for later. Let's have him you know develop and you know, growing experience, and let's go to week at the end. Maybe gets in doesn't worry, and we bring in Chavi earlier. No problem with that. I just, you know, congratulate, congratulations where I do. I criticize a lot of this board for what things that they do, but when it has to be rewarded, I reward Bartomeu for, you know, trusting him at the end, or apparently trusting at the end. If he doesn't trust him at the end, I'll be criticized about it. But, anyways, we hasn't done. Uh, leave me your opinions about the Manchester City situation. Do you think that it was fair? Do you think that it's... Well, you should think that it's fair because all the proof is there. But anyways, leave me all your opinions in the comment section below. Comment, like and subscribe. And I'll see you next one. Blah, buenas.